Hey everybody, this is GGB, and today we're going to be going over what happened in college basketball yesterday. Anyways, hit that like and subscribe button. I'd like to celebrate what is, technically speaking, you know what you know what today is? You know what this video is? It's officially the 500th video on GGB's channel. Thank you everyone who's watched and subscribed so far, and it's, 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 I've really enjoyed doing all these videos for you guys, but let's get into a college basketball episode today. Let's see what happened yesterday in the Big Ten. Actually, weirdly enough, Nebraska kept this a very close game with Illinois. It went to overtime. Illinois was able to pull it out, which a whole bunch of Ohio State fans were team fans were like, no. But Nebraska really played a very good game against Illinois. One of the better games I've seen them play, like ever. <laughs> They have not played well for most of Big Ten stretch. They played extremely well in that game, and it's making me a little bit nervous as a Penn State fan. But let's go over. We have a lot of important college basketball games today. But let's start with uh, some ACC ones. We have at 11 o'clock, Wake Forest traveling to number 17, Florida State. And at 5 o'clock, we have UNC traveling to number 9, Virginia, let's go over what would happen with a win and a loss for each team. Now, I'm sure if you are a Virginia Tech fan, you're a huge, and I mean a huge, a stark supporter of uh, Wake Forest today. Uh, but let's go over what happens with a win and a loss for each team. Obviously, with a loss, Virginia is going to stay in first place no matter what. They're going to be a first place ACC team no matter what happens today. But it can make it a little bit closer for a team like Virginia Tech or a team like Florida State. Now, if you look at it, Virginia plays UNC. A UNC win could get them to 8-4, and four, possibly pass Louisville, if Louisville does, in fact, lose on Wednesday to Syracuse. But I don't know if that's going to happen. Plus, they might pass them for the time being, but the fact is I don't know if it's going to be a long-term success for UNC. Now, if Wake Forest is to beat Virginia, they're still not moving. They're going to stay where they are no matter with a win or a loss because NC State sits one spot ahead of them with a 4-7 and seven record. If they win, they have a 4-8 and eight record. Miami, on the other hand, has a 3-10 and ten record, so with a loss, they fall to 3-9. and nine. Again, not as bad as Miami. So that's what we're looking at if we're going to be talking about Wake Forest, Virginia. Now, again, Florida State can fall with a loss, and will if Florida State does in fact lose to UNC. The fact is a twelve and six record is not better than a ten and four record, but but the eight and four record I believe is better than the six and three record. They might be able to get UNC might be able to get the third place with a win, I'd like to point out. Now Virginia Tech hasn't played in like a whole week, but the fact that they can move out without playing is very amazing. Plus they get to play UNC on Tuesday, so We'll get to see what happens there. That's what can happen in the ACC with wins and losses for each team. Now we're going to go move on to Big 12 basketball. There we have 11 o'clock Kansas State traveling to number 23 Oklahoma State. At 12 o'clock we have number 12 Oklahoma traveling to number 14 West Virginia. And at 1 o'clock we have TCU traveling to number 13 Texas. So let's go. Basically every team that's important really except for Baylor is playing today. Now, Kansas is actually fourth place in the Big 12, and they do play tomorrow against Iowa State, uh, but unfortunately for them, they're not ranked. Now, what happens with the win and loss for each team? Now, West Virginia plays Oklahoma. Obviously, whoever wins this game... Uh, actually, that's not true. If Oklahoma wins this... Actually, no, I'm right. If Oklahoma wins this game, they move to second place. If West Virginia loses this game... If West Virginia wins this game, they stay in second place. So basically, this is a game for second place. So it's a very important game uh, in the Big 12 conversation. You put you right behind Baylor, and this is likely as high as you can possibly get, with Baylor pretty much having that spot at number one locked down. Now, Texas, on the other hand, does play today. So does Oklahoma State. Now, Oklahoma State can get to 500 today. Texas Tech, on the other hand, does not play today, so uh, there's no chance that Oklahoma State's moving anywhere uh, unless they can move down one spot if TCU beats Texas tomorrow. So if you're an Oklahoma State fan, weirdly enough, you're a fan of t Texas today because you do not want TCU passing you. Now, Oklahoma State plays Kansas State today. Oklahoma Kansas State actually put together a very good game against uh, Texas, so you're going to have to watch out for that. Maybe they'll do something. Maybe they'll surprise someone. 
Find it unlikely, though. Uh, so, I like... So we went over West Virginia, Oklahoma, Texas. If they lose, they fall to six and five, twelve and six. And the fact is, uh, Texas Tech doesn't play, so that means they're going to move into fifth place with a Texas loss. So, if you're a Texas Tech fan, you're going to be a huge uh, TCU fan. On the other hand, if you're an Oklahoma State fan, obviously you're hoping to beat Kansas State, move to six and six, and therefore the TCU game wouldn't really matter that much. But if you lose, you like to have a little bit of wiggle room with TCU losing as well. So that's what really is going to happen in the Big 12 with wins or losses for each team. So teams can move, but it's not going to be any huge major moves. Now we have the Big 10. We have some pretty important games. At 11 o'clock, we have Indiana traveling to number 4, Ohio State. We have number 15, Iowa at 130, traveling to Michigan State. And we have at 4 o'clock, Northwestern traveling to number 25, Rutgers. Those are the Big 10 games we have going on today. No Wisconsin, no... Uh, Purdue, no Illinois. So it's it's actually a rather, and no Michigan, that's another thing. It's not a huge day ranked team-wise, but we do have a little bit of movement possible. Now Ohio State plays Indiana. Again, with a win, Ohio State's going to clinch staying in that uh, three spot. Now with a loss, they stay at 7-5, and since Wisconsin's not playing today, uh, they, they're going to stay where they are for now. Now, on Sunday, they play Michigan, so... Wisconsin would have a chance to pass them with a win. So obviously Ohio State would like a little bit of wiggle room there. So obviously winning this game would be pretty important. Now Indiana, on the other hand, cannot really afford to lose this game or they'll drop a spot behind Minnesota. Minnesota picked up a huge win against Purdue on Wednesday. So that's a thing to be looking for as well. Now Purdue, on the other hand, does not play against anyone until Tuesday. So that means Rutgers with a win can pass them for at least the present moment. Now, if many of you realize Rutgers is playing Northwestern. Uh, so, remember, this is basically what's going to happen. Ohio State isn't going to move yet. Now, with a loss, uh, if if Ohio State is to lose this game, they fall to 10-5. and five. Then, if you're an Ohio State fan, you become a huge Michigan fan uh, against Wisconsin on Sunday. Now, we're going down to oh, Iowa with a win. They can fall, move to nine and five, fifteen and six overall, which results in a weirdness because I don't believe Iowa has played Wisconsin yet, and I believe they have it up on their schedule. Have, yeah, I'm right. They haven't played them. They have to play them on Tuesday. I mean on Thursday. Uh, but that would result in a weird tiebreaker because they'd have the exact same in conference record and an exact same overall record. I don't know how that would break. I think it'd go. Uh, strength of schedule, but I'm not positive who has a, the higher strength of schedule. So Iowa could possibly move up to fourth place with a win, or they could not. Uh, but it, they'd be really neck and neck with Wisconsin with a loss. They fall to eight and six, 14 and seven overall. They would stay where they're at, still ahead of Purdue, uh, based on the just overall record, 14 and seven record being better than a 13 and eight record. So that's what we're looking at. Iowa, Iowa, if with a win, can move up to fourth place, and with a loss, isn't going to move anywhere. Uh, but it does put Ru Purdue in a pretty great situation. Now, Rutgers, on the other hand, if they are able to upset, uh, if they are able to upset, who are they playing? Thing? No, they're not upsetting anyone. If they're able to pull it off against Northwestern, they move to eight and seven, and are pretty solid in where they're sitting right now. Uh, they would have an 8-7 record, half a game really behind Purdue. And then, if you're a Rutgers fan, you become a huge, and I mean a huge fan of Michigan State on Tuesday when they play Purdue. So, that's going to be something to watch. But Rutgers has a huge chance to move up into the uh, sixth place in the Big Ten, which is very impressive and very important for this Rutgers Scarlet Knights squad. Now, Indiana, on the other hand, has had some pretty great... So, this is... This is going to be a tough one for Ohio State. Ohio State needs to watch out here because Indiana's a tough team. You're going to have to really watch out for them because don't remember, don't forget, Indiana has a sweep on Iowa this year, which means if it comes down to it, Indiana's going to get the tiebreaker over Iowa. So watch out for that. Now, this is an important game for Rutgers and Indiana. So, like, if you look at it, if Rutgers does lose to Northwestern, they're going to drop to 7-8. and eight. And the fact is... Uh, they're just gonna they're gonna be in trouble. I mean, there's nothing about it. Uh Rutgers is in trouble if they lose and Indiana wins, because Indiana will move into seventh place and Rutgers will fall to eighth. And that's not where you want to be if you're Rutgers. Rutgers needs to put themselves in a great position to keep winning. Now, Indiana, on the other hand, with a win if they're able to upset 
Ohio State, they can hope for a Rutgers loss, and they can move up to seventh place, which is the top half of the Big Ten, which is where you really want to sit if you want to make the March Madness tournament. Now, remember, top half is very important. Now, I do believe we're going to be taking about 10 approximate teams, so it's not super important. Like, I believe Indiana, Minnesota, and Michigan State will probably make the tournament if they keep playing as well as they have been. Uh, but... Uh, it is something to look out for. Indiana has a chance to move up here with a Rutgers loss in an Indiana win. Now, with a loss for Indiana, they can fall to 6-7, and 11-9 overall, which is in a great place to put themselves, and they would fall down to ninth place behind Minnesota. Now, Michigan State, as many of you know, is playing Iowa. Now, if they are able to upset Iowa today, they are not moving, but they'd be one game behind Minnesota. Now, on the other hand, with a loss, you fall to four and eight, which isn't horrible. You can have a tent need overall record, but Penn State plays Nebraska on Sunday, and you have to really become a Nebraska fan then, because uh, then Penn State would pass you with a win. So obviously, it's not ideal for Michigan State to lose here today, but it's going to be very impressive that they do pull off the win. Now, Northwestern, on the other hand, kind of needs this W. Now, they're not going to move with a win, but it would put them very close. They'd be behind Maryland at 4-9, and nine, which Maryland... Actually, Maryland plays Minnesota on Sunday, so you can hope, if you're a Northwestern fan, that Maryland falls to... Minnesota, and then you can pass, you can be tied with them at 4 and 10. So there are some things that can go on with Northwestern. Northwestern, really, the point is you need to be as high a seat as possible so you can go on a run in the tournament. Now, on the other hand, now let's move on to a different conference, and we have the Missouri Valley Conference. I really didn't think we were going to be talking about this much after Drake lost to Valparaiso uh, on Sunday last week, but uh, Loyola, Illinois was able to move into the top 25 so we're going to talk about that they're playing drake today so now drake with a win moves to 11 and 1 and loyal illinois falls to 12 and 2 so whoever wins this game takes con either takes control or contain keeps control of the missouri valley conference now that's really all i have to say against missouri valley it's not going to impact it's going to impact who's at the top and that's not uh, th that's very important so it's going to be interesting to watch so if you can i recommend watching that game because it's very important for the playoffs uh, moving on, we have the SEC basketball. We have some different games occurring in this one. We have 1 o'clock, number 16, Tennessee traveling to LSU. At 2.30, we have Georgia traveling to number 11, Alabama. At 3 o'clock, we have Arkansas traveling to number 10, Missouri. Uh, that's it, if you're wondering. But that's what's important in the SEC. Now, Alabama with a loss. The fact is, I don't see Alabama losing this SEC. It's, I mean, how many games are left? There's not many. There's what... There's six. And the fact is, they're going to beat Vanderbilt. They're going to beat Texas A&M. Uh, they're probably going to beat Mississippi State Auburn. The only one I'm really worried about Alabama, if you're an Alabama fan, is the Arkansas game. Arkansas is a legitimate team that can beat you. and has played extremely well recently. But, I don't know. Uh, I'm not too concerned about the Georgia game. I, I would have been if Georgia had beaten... Uh, if they had beaten the team... If they had beaten... Tennessee, uh, but instead they got pretty much clobbered by Tennessee, so I don't see this as a huge chance, but if Alabama lose this game, they're not going to move. If they win this game, they're not moving. They're pretty much locked into first place, in my opinion. Now, Tennessee c controls their destiny right now. With the win, they stay at 8-4 and four in conference, and they just they, they stay where they're at. They don't need to lose. They actually really, I mean, you're really begging uh, you don't have much wiggle room, is what I'm trying to say, in the SEC at second place. Now, if you lose Tennessee, you have you could free fall. Uh, I'm serious, you can free fall. The fact is, with a loss, you can fall all the way down to fourth place today, which is not ideal, to be sure. Uh, now, remember, with the win, they stay in second place. Now, Arkansas, on the other hand, is playing Missouri today. So now, Missouri is ranked 10th. So really, if you are a huge Tennessee fan... You need to be a huge, and I mean a huge, proponent of Missouri today, and you need to be a huge fan of, uh, you need to be a huge fan of, uh, dang, his, uh, yourself. <laughs> Remember, if, if you're an LSU fan, obviously you, you control, you can, you can be able to beat 
Tennessee. If you beat Tennessee, you move to 8-4, and four, and then obviously you're a Missouri fan, so you can move to 8-4, and four, move into second place. Now, Arkansas, if you beat Missouri, you move to 8-4, and four, and remember, there is a possibility that nothing changes at the top four if everyone wins. Tennessee beats Tennessee beats LSU. Actually, yeah, no, there's a likelihood that nothing changes at the top. Arkansas beats Missouri, and then that would just have Missouri... Now, Missouri, if they do lose to Arkansas, could fall down past Florida. Now, Florida has not played in a while. The last game they played was on February 3rd, about 10 days ago, and the next game they'll play is on February 16th. So they had a very large hiatus where they didn't play anything, and it was a good thing because they were starting to play really poorly. Uh, but if Missouri loses, they'll fall behind Florida into sixth place in the SEC, where they're sitting right now as fourth. I mean, fifth. Now, if everyone... if I mean, Missouri can fall, hot, climb as high as third place with a win today. Uh, you'd have to hope that really Arkansas loses. I mean, no, you can. You know, if you beat Arkansas, you're going to get to third place today, really regardless of what happens. Tennessee or LSU will lose. So therefore, with a win, Missouri's in third place. Now, on the other hand, Missouri with a loss falls to sixth. So... Very important things can happen in the SEC today. Looking at it, if Georgia's able to pull off the huge win against Alabama, they're not moving anywhere, but with a loss, they could fall behind Auburn and Mississippi State, although Auburn does have a pretty difficult game. Actually, they don't have a difficult game today. I wasn't lying. I was thinking of Kentucky of old, not Kentucky of now. Auburn should win against Kentucky today, and Mississippi State plays Vanderbilt today. So, really, Georgia needs to pull off this win if they really want to stay where they're at, which is currently in seventh place wait no in eighth place in the sec so yeah that's what we're looking at in the sec real quick now moving on to the next conference we have big east which there's only really two ranked teams left in the big east and that's at four o'clock in number five villanova traveling to number 19 creighton now this is a pretty important game at the top of the big east again i don't know who exactly is going to make it in from this conference because Honestly, you have three teams that obviously should make it. You have Villanova, Creighton, and Xavier all playing extremely good football. Honestly, I think Xavier should probably be ranked, uh, but they're just not. 11-2 and two record, I don't know if that's just not enough to get them in there, but I think they should be ranked. But, you know, they, they're they not, so I think it's just because they haven't played in a while. The last time they played was January 30th, so they've had a little bit of a hiatus since then. Uh, but they play UConn today, so they'll have a chance to prove themselves. Now, UConn's a team that's drastically fallen. Uh, but really, at the top of the Big East, well, hey, we, we have a chance. I mean, Creighton has a chance to pull it off. Now, if they win, they could probably be able to move, move up in the rankings if you actually look at it. You actually look at it, Creighton sits in an 11-4 and record. So... Yeah, no, there's there's a lot of good things that you should like about this 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 this, this, this Blue Jays team. It has it has a great team put together, but the problem is, in my opinion, with Creighton is they lose to bad teams. Now this is a chance to add another quality win. I the problem with Creighton, in my opinion, I think it's going to be right, like a four seed and they will probably lose to a thirteen seed in the tournament. They just have disappointing games against disappointing teams. If you ever look. If you look at the record, they have a 15-5 and five record, right? One of the losses is Kansas, which isn't bad, right? But if you look at it, they have some pretty bad losses on their resume. You look at the Georgetown loss, they have a loss to Providence, they have a loss to Butler, they have a loss to... Uh, they have a loss to Marquette in here. So, yeah, no, you don't have great losses on your resume. Like, if you want to lose, you want to lose close to a good basketball team, which is what the Kansas game was, right? Like, Kansas is a reasonable loss to have. Now, some of the, again, I just listed the losses. They're not reasonable. You have Georgetown, Marquette, Butler, and Providence. Those are bottom team tier teams. The best, the worst, you played a close game against DePaul, for going to say. DePaul is about the closest you should get to an easy W in the entire uh, Big East. It should be the easiest thing. You should be able to walk away with that W. And the fact is, they just weren't able to. So that's why I'm worried a little bit about this Creighton team, but I do think they've been able to show up against top tier opponents like Xavier, Seton Hall. Uh, so I don't know. I think I think this is a huge chance for them to prove of themselves. Move to twelve and four. 
I think that's a very good record. I don't know if it's better than an 80% win percentage, but it might be enough to take the Big East with a win. So very important game to look at today. Now, in WCC, we got number one Gonzaga traveling to San Francisco. Again, Gonzaga's not going to move with a win or a loss, but it would move in the AP rankings. That's definitely what you don't want if you're Gonzaga. Now, San Francisco, on the other hand, can move to 5-5 five and five with a win and pass LMU. Uh, now... San Francisco has a two-game losing streak, but I'd like to remind you the San Francisco team actually gave up quite a fight against Gonzaga last year, so it's going to be interesting to say the very least. I think San Francisco is a decent team, and they have a win against Virginia on their resume, lest you forget. So that's a whole thing. I think the Dons definitely have a chance today, although I don't know if it's a huge one. Now, in college basketball, we have the Pac-12 at 7 o'clock. We have number 20, USC, traveling to Washington State. Now, if you are a UCLA fan, you're ecstatic by the fact that USC can lose today and you can retake position in first place. If UCLA beats Washington and USC does lose to Washington State, they can take control of the Pac-12 again. Now, looking at Washington State, uh, with a win, you're not moving anywhere. I'm sorry, Washington State. It's just straight facts. You can't move anywhere with a win, but you can get right behind Oregon State, about half a game behind. So there's definitely some things to look forward to if you're Washington State. Now, if Oregon State's to lose, which they do play Arizona uh, today, Arizona State, uh, actually on Sunday, uh, they you could hope for them to lose. They fall to 10-10. and You would have a 13-8 record. So... If you're a Washington State fan, obviously you hope you beat USC today. You can, and then Oregon State loses to Arizona State on Sunday, and then you can take over at that position. Uh, so that's basically what you're hoping for if you're Washington State. But who does GGB think is going to be upset today? In my opinion, the biggest chance for an upset is when. Indiana travels to number four, Ohio State. I'm sorry, Indiana's, the Hoosiers have been playing some amazing basketball, and I understand, so is Ohio State. Ohio State's a really great basketball team, and I've watched them for a long time. I really do think they're a very good team, and I think they have a chance to be a number one seed this year because I just think they're that good. Uh, but Indiana is also a very good basketball team, and a team I think is underrated. Uh, they, they have a sweep on Iowa. A lot of people forget that. They have a really good basketball team put together this year. I think they're, they have a chance to... Make it to Sweet 16 in the March Madness Tournament. Hey everybody, this is GGB saying adios amigos, go Hoosiers.